And today, I want to show you how you can take control over your proxy media. What's going on guys? JD here from Perspective Captured. And let's say I have a destination shoot and then a long flight home. Well, I wanted to be able to make my library more manageable and travelable, allowing me to edit on the go, or when I got home or before I left, I could upload it to Dropbox, collab with others. I wanted to be able to travel and edit on my laptop, and I didn't want to have to plug in an external hard drive every time I went to edit or every time I went to close it and put it away to do something else. So my laptop is only a 256 gigabyte SSD, but I do have this little 128 gigabyte hard drive made by SanDisk. I'll leave the link below. They're relatively inexpensive, but I figured I could make this part of the travel system by putting files in different places, and it might just work. So let's take a look at how I did that. A very important note though to, rem to remember, Final Cut Pro X will not make proxies for your imported music, sounds, graphics, dialogue replacement, dialogue recordings. So make sure those follow you through this process. Make sure you put an extra copy on something like this so you've got that. And you could double check yourself before you move on and just leave your hard drive in your bag or whatever. Now that the proxy media has been produced in the previous video, let's just enter the wormhole that is the Final Cut Pro library. So we're gonna enter our library by right-clicking it, then show package contents. Now we're gonna to navigate to our project, event, transcoded media folder, and here's our proxy folder. These are the files that we're gonna do some magic with. We're gonna start by opening up Apple's compressor. Drag in your media, command A to make sure all are selected, right-click on it, and then choose add outputs. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see video sharing services. Click the triangle on the left and the drop down will give you export quality options for your output media to choose from. Here I choose small because, well, that's the purpose, to get easy to manage small files that take little space. I won't be color grading with this anyway, so it doesn't matter. I always change the output location to the desktop so I can move it around right after it's done exporting and I don't have to go looking for it. Let's add a folder and call it small proxy. Make sure you have clicked your new folder and click OK. Next, don't forget to click start batch at the bottom right corner or you'll sit in an infinite loop of nothingness. Now that it's all complete right there on your desktop, you can see that all the files have been named with the suffix of dash small. If we select all, then right click and choose rename the 66 items, we get that ability. Make sure replace text is chosen in the drop down and type in dash small to remove it. You can see the example change at the bottom left hand corner. Now go ahead and delete your proxy media out of your library folder and replace it with your compressed files. Now let's reopen Final Cut Pro and check proxy media in the dropdown and you can now see our low res proxy files are working just fine. If you want to take this one step further, you can move those proxy files wherever you want and create aliases for all of them. Move the aliases to the library's proxy folder, remove the alias's name using the rename feature and then load up Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro will create symlinks with the FCP1 name, and you can delete the aliases you created, keeping the ones Final Cut Pro created. Finally, let's pull up a quick look at how much library storage space was changed through this process. You still need that storage space, but now you can dictate where that is, rather than the library taking all of it for itself. We started with a library of 23.13 gigabytes full of proxy and brought that down to less than one gigabyte of space at 795.1 megabytes using our created small proxy media. But we got even smaller when moving those files or using aliases or sim links all the way down to 135 megabytes. So that concludes the second part of my proxy series. And just like last time, please leave some comments below those life stories of what you have going on and Let's get that conversation up and running. Thank you so much for watching. Hitting that subscribe button not only helps me, but helps you too. You'll feel accomplished today. And if you're feeling good after that, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Now get out of here and go make progress. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Try.